Hello everyone, my name is Kwamea Ross and today I have a message called Exposing My Guardian Ad Litem, Elba Hedensheimer. Now the reason why I'm exposing Elba Hedensheimer because she was appointed as the guardian ad litem for my children back in February on February 14, 2020 exactly when my children were first taken out of the home. And as I'm going to be showing you here, it indicates uh, that she was supposed to act in the best interest of the children, which I feel she has failed to do. Also, she has been a big proponent in keeping my children from being released back into my custody. And I actually feel that this was a retaliation because of a grievance that I filed against her back in April of 2020 when Elba Hedensheimer were not, was not, were not, was not considering the things that my children were going through and I felt that she was not advocating for them properly. Now I'm going to be pulling up the grievance that I filed and I'm going to go ahead and read some of the complaints and then I'll also allow you to listen to uh, some of the arguments that Elba Hedensheimer presented in the court yesterday to keep my son from being released into my custody without protective supervision and to also further delay my daughter uh, from being sent home and released from the custody of children and family services. Now as I'm going to be posting here on the screen for you to look at, I'm just going to do a, a brief synopsis of this grievance. Now, when my children were first taken out of the home, they were going through a lot of, of, of different illnesses and things. They're both disabled. My uh, daughter was diagnosed with microcephaly, which is an underdeveloped brain. She also has selective mutism, and she had a lot of cognitive delays. On top of that, she was having seizures. So there was a lot of things that were going on. My son had asthma at the time. He had ADHD. He also had cognitive delays. And when they took my children out of the home, I felt right away that they were not being properly taken care of. Now, my son was put in a setting in a uh, first private foster care setting where he was actually being subjected to bullying and harassment and mistreatment by one of the foster children. And I actually made a complaint and contacted uh, someone and, sp and they spoke out when I sp spoke to my caseworker at the time who was Toretta Stores. And what they did was had the child removed from the home, but I had gotten footage um, on my uh, iPad of this, this this treatment, so that's how that happened. They ended up moving him out of the home. And so then they said that my uh, son had, had had some behavioral issues, and they actually moved him into a group home. Now, before they moved him to the group home, they were trying to locate a place for him. They had no placement, so they were keeping him in, in a child care room uh, at the Jane Etna Hunter Center where my son was sleeping in a daycare room. He did not, he would come straight home after school. He would, they would transport him to school and bring him back. And he was in the daycare room every single day with nothing to do. Uh, he would stay there every day on the weekends and just in that room. And he'd been in that room for a week, wasn't being fed properly. I asked him when he was eating, said like hot pockets or whatever else. There were no like stoves or anything to really cook any real meals. And so I had brought this attention to, um, Elba Head and Sherman, when I saw her. Now, she did not come to my first pretrial hearing, which I had. She was not there. She did not show up to after the trial was over. And she spoke to me very briefly. And I brought forth the concerns that I was having. Now, my daughter was in a, a, um, a foster care setting where she was having seizures. And there were a lot of issues going on with that. And let's just bring this up here. And I'm going to go ahead and read some of the things because I felt... Uh, she did not have any concern whatsoever about the things that my children were going through. And I did not see her. She did not speak with me. She had promised to contact me about the issues and she never did. So I went ahead and filed this grievance and it really talks about how my children were being sent back and forth. My son was in the group home where he was not having access to an in his inhaler. They would lie and say, oh, they give him his inhaler. Uh, he needs to ask for it. Now, when a child is dealing with, you know, special needs, and you know that they're supposed to administer their medication. I had uh, documentation. She's supposed to administer, administer this ed, um, medication at certain times of the day before activity. He was going to gym every day and he couldn't breathe. He was sleeping in a room at night that was cold. And all these things were going on. On top of that, I felt that with COVID starting, he was susceptible to actually, at that time, they were saying those with underlying conditions could be susceptible to having more of a, a severe um severe illness if they contract COVID-19. So my son was at a group home being exposed to several different people. Uh, there were like several children in this group home, multiple staff coming in and out. I brought this attention up to my guardian at Lightham. No one ever advocated. I wanted my son out of the uh, group home. They kept them in the group home. And then on top of that, they actually transferred him to another group home in the middle of the COVID uh, pandemic where he had to be quarantined for an entire two weeks. And it was just a lot of things that were being carelessly uh, done and recklessly done, they were placing him in situations and in placements that were was not good for him because the group home, when we had a meeting, the group home themselves said that 
my son, his intellect and IQ was so delayed and, 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 and so uh, low that they could not help him. Their services were not an, an adequate fit for him. And this was something I felt that Children and Family Services should have known before placing my son there. But Elba Hedensheimer, who again, as you look at the description that I'm posting up here, her job is supposed to um, report any information she's supposed to conduct investigations and report to the court such information as will assist in determining the best interests of the children and this is what i felt she hadn't done she hadn't even met with my children until i started complaining it took a while for even to meet with them and even talk with them and so it's like she were she gets paid by the court and i i believe that they just get paid by the court to keep the children there they're not looking out for the best interests of the children and on top of that in september as elba hedensheimer argued uh against me that that my children should not be released into my custody. And there was no real reason behind it. There was no reason because I was, at that time, I finished, uh, completed all the parenting classes that they wanted me to attend. I had my certificate for the parenting classes. I was taking the therapy. Um, my children were making progress. There were great reports of this. But again, I feel like I said, because of the grievance that I filed against her, because her incompetence and not taking the case seriously, she held a vendetta against me and as a result her poor decision and judgment making has affected my children now also my children were in the group home there were a lot of issues that res re arose while my son was in the group home he had gotten stabbed as i posted another video and showed all of that information uh he had went awol a few times i felt that there was abuse going on with him Elba Head and Shaman was nowhere around during any of these things. She never once reported back to the courts any of these things to advocate for my children that they be placed in a different situation, that my son be removed from that group home. And this is why I'm exposing her today because these people, they get a paycheck and they represent the court, but they're and, and they're supposed to represent our children, but they're not. They're not representing our children. They're getting paid. It's an all corrupt game that they're getting paid to keep our children in the custody of the courts and the custody of children and family services. And then you have people like El Elba Hedensheimer who, you know, for whatever reasons, they, they hold vendettas or they use very poor discretion or they don't take it seriously. They have all these cases and they don't take it seriously. I had staffing meetings that Elba Hedensheimer didn't feel was important enough to attend until the last minute. She would sometimes come in to these staffing meetings five minutes before the, the meeting was adjourned or before it was over, or she'd come in probably 10 minutes before and then only stay for a few minutes and then leave again. So how can you know what's going on with a child if you're not present? And what she did not like was the fact that I spoke up and brought this stuff to attention and reported her for it. Now I'm going to show you I had a court trial yesterday where Elba Hedensheimer once again was arguing against uh, the best interests for the children by singling me out, saying that my children shouldn't be with me. But yet she was steadily advocating for, you know, visitations uh, with the father who has been estranged from his children for over 10 years. They don't know him. There's been allegations of abuse. Even though I did not file a police report back when they were younger, I did eventually file a police report, which has failed to go properly investigated by the police department. And there's been a lot of concern with all this. And she has not once brought it up to the court or mentioned any of it. But instead, she continues to try to paint me uh, in a negative light as a vendetta to keep my children from coming home. But what I'm saying, she is not doing her job. She's not doing the job that she is hired to do and what she's supposed to do as a guardian ad litem. And I'm going to go ahead and let you listen to her arguments against me and let you listen to, because as a result, my son was actually kept in protective supervision and my daughter Cherish has not been, has not been sent home or released home. Now I'm going to let you listen to this video now, portions of what was discussed in court. If you do want to listen to the entire trial, I recommend that you uh, watch my video called Child Custody Hearing. Here is that video. And, and Ms. Kowalski, is, is, do you represent both children or just or, or one of them? Uh, I represent both children, Your Honor. Okay, and, and your position for today's hearing? Well, with regard to Desmond Ross, I'm in agreement with the motion to terminate temporary to terminate custody and return him to his mother, and he also is in agreement with that. Um, as far as Cherish Ross is concerned, I did meet with her as well. She is not in agreement with the motion with regards to her. It's a motion for an extension of temporary custody. Um, she wants to go home as well. So she would not be in agreement with that motion today, but Desmond is in agreement. He can't get home fast enough, so I would respectfully request that the court grant the motion with regard to Desmond today. 
and perhaps set the motion with regard to cherish out for further hearing as there is not agreement on that today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Hedesheimer, is your, your position, and, and we really hear on same family, children and everything, but we, we have two, se complete, uh, two separate motions here. If, try to break them down separately here but your, your position in regards to mr uh, mr clo uh, the various different motions that we've had presented here and what's already been heard your position uh, your honor um i did find a recommendation um for this case uh i am in agreement with uh Desmond to go back home however i'm requesting to place the supervision and regarding the other child, if it uh, looks like the other parties are not in agreement, and I, I, I have no objection for this hearing to be uh, postponed for a uh, motion here regarding the extension. Um, I, my position since my report was filed has not changed regarding the cherished Sorry, Your Honor. That's okay. Any questions of uh, social workers? Yes. Yes. Ms. Sawyer, uh, could you please explain to the court what kind of placement uh, at Ohio Guyston Desmond has been since he was admitted on last year on May? What kind of uh, placement it is? Yeah. Well, you know, Ohio oh. Guyston has different levels of placement, yeah, right? They have, yeah, it's a restricted, more, it's a restricted setting, correct? Yes. Okay, so he was at the most restricting setting. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Correct. Now, um, you just testified that the child has been, is ready uh, to step down to a less restrictive setting, right? Correct. You just indicated it can be a foster home or going to uh, his mom home. Is that right? Correct. You also testify that Ohio Geiston is recommending services to continue uh, with the child. Is that true? Yes, they talked, uh, the case manager talked about that he could, I don't know if it would be the same therapist or counselor uh, that would be um, imperative for him to continue, like family counseling and all. Okay, it's also recommended that he has to continue with ongoing counseling, which means individual counseling and also pharmacological management. Is that true? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, one of the things in the case plan for mother was the mental health, right? That's true. Okay, so what mom has been doing regarding her mental health? Um, so she is um, was receiving uh, mental health with Ohio Guidestone, um, different place, obviously. But um, she, I recently I had gotten um, I spoke with her counselor, therapist, and she was having trouble um, engaging with mom. Uh, she had a visit set up for she said nine o'clock. My, I called mom and said that how can you were, you know, like you're not engaging with your therapist. And she said she never called her. So I spoke with the uh, therapist, Ms. Tarsus, and she just stated that she did call, but it was like 15 minutes late, but she did call her, you know, that same day. However, she has said that out of the 19 sessions that she's had with her, she's, all, she's uh, completed 14 with her. However, she said the last, that one that she missed, she did contact her the next day to have a um, session with her, and she absolutely got nowhere uh, with the mother. She said mom was agitated. She was, you know, like upset, but she couldn't get anywhere with her, you know, with her engagement with her services. Now, just a brief side note here to explain about the situation with my therapist, Michelle Tarsis from Ohio Guidestone. Now, Michelle Tarsus, she has been doing this a lot. We would schedule meetings and she would not call at the time that we agreed upon. Because at the time I was I was working and things, I was explaining to her, I have visitations with my children set up. I have all these things scheduled throughout the week. I have a job and if we set aside a time, I can't sit here all day and wait for you to call 
or you just call anytime you want. There's times where she just calls on random days and then she would call like at different times than what we had specified. So if you're a professional, we are, you're a therapist and you schedule a therapy session with me and you're supposed to call at that time i'm sitting there waiting for you to call the time now she indicated that uh meeting that we were talking about was on june 19th which i'm going to post it here because i have it in my calendar uh we had scheduled after she had missed calling me about three sessions or so she finally we finally got a hold of each other and she, we agreed upon uh saturday at nine o'clock because i said obviously friday's not working out for you because we had originally agreed upon Friday um, at two o'clock because I told her I had to be at work at three, either one or two o'clock. She wasn't calling. She did a few other sessions at that time, but then she stopped calling at that time. And so I said, we know what, since, since Friday apparently isn't working, you haven't been calling me, then how about we do Saturday at 9 a.m.? Is that fine? Is that okay for you? She says, yes. So I was working before I started working because I do other things. I have other jobs on the side that I was doing. I shouldn't have to explain my entire life schedule to these people but the thing is I was waiting for her to call at nine I sat and waited around for close to a half hour if you could look here she told uh, my caseworker Becky Sawyers that she called 15 minutes later but she actually called at 9 21 which I'm going to post that here she left a voicemail message by that time I had already started back working because I took time out of my day to wait for her call now I explained that to Becky Sawyer but the reason why I was agitated because she Michelle Tars had gone back and lied to my caseworker and said she hadn't been able to contact me I hadn't returned any of her calls and then she started Started talking proceeded to talk to me on the phone about how Becky had told her that my daughter was underweight so it's like a game they play a psychological game which I told her they're all in it together because you you, you all, all the caseworkers I had they would start off fine but then they would stop calling or they would stop being available I try to reach out to them they wouldn't be available at our specified time and it's a game they could pl they play along to say okay my therapy sessions weren't going as as supposed to go or they I wasn't making progress I was making progress with all my therapy sessions which I still don't even realize why I even had to have therapy sessions to begin with but this was a game that they were playing and Michelle Tarsus uh, lied and that's why I was in a, a mood where I wasn't agitated she was just playing games mentioning to me about how my daughter was underweight and I explained to her that she was actually overweight that she was getting obese by being in foster care and you know she was just just going back and forth and I, I refused you know she kept saying well if you can't trust me because I told her if you're going to be dishonest and tell my caseworker one thing and lie then you know I don't trust you and she's the one who said well you know what if you don't trust me I don't think you know I don't feel comfortable with these sessions because you know I'm going to be blatant and blunt if you're going to be sitting here uh playing games I'm going to call you out on it and this is what they do they antagonize people they play these games back and forth they're in closely involved they're contracted with uh the children and family services so they're all in it together uh you sit here and act like you're advocating for me and one on one hand then you go back behind my back or you play these little games and don't call me at times that therapy session is supposed to be and this has happened multiple times it wasn't just a one occurrence so yes that's my side of the story regarding that and michelle lied about it that's why uh she felt that you know what when i called her out on her you know dishonesty and the game she was playing she felt that oh i was you know being agitated and upset the the, the trigger the trigger words they like to use to paint you as you know, uh, the besmirch your character. And like I told her about that, you use certain uh, key words to say, oh, someone's uh, angry or someone's this or that. I already know the game that they were playing. And Michelle Tarsus and Becky Sawyer together were playing this game. But Becky Sawyer's, I had already explained her the situation with Michelle Tarsus, and she lied about it in court. So she recommends that she um, talk to her supervisor about um, recommending a new therapist. I have not been able to talk with her supervisor. I've been trying to reach her to see what's going on with that. Okay, so have um, you ever received any kind of report in writing from uh, Mrs. Ross therapist regarding her progress or not with therapy? Did you receive anything else regarding those 15 sessions? Uh, yeah, just stating that she had, that she was um, engaged in 14 out of 19, five she did not engage in. And these and are all lies. The woman her. never been called. Um, this is what they do. They play there. games. Mom was um, had a was more re, uh, reluctant to talk about certain things. So that was one of the reasons too that she said she had a hard time engaging with her because she, you know, was not like they weren't on the same page. Like she was trying to get her to open up about certain things, and she said the mom would not. So the last session they had, she said she, you know, was agitated and she was upset and she said she couldn't get anywhere with her for her services. 
Okay, when you said about certain things, are the same things that we were concerned and you opened the case? Um, well, she ta you know, about, about, are you talking about like the certain like the uh, beliefs and all that? Yes. Yeah, she um, tried to talk to her about those beliefs and all that that she projects That's on her children. However, my Christianity, because I teach my children about God. Subject. Okay, but that was the concern of the agency, isn't, isn't true? That, that's correct. Okay, so at this point, you are recommending sending this child to his mother without protective supervision. Do you feel comfortable with that if you by your, are testifying today that the therapist is not involved or engaged and is recommending for somebody else? The woman speaking, Elba uh, had a No, I would be in. I would not. I would be in agreement with protective supervision. She gets okay. paid that by the poor the okay. to keep these children. Ms. Sawyer, um, you see the game they Mr. play. Davis, isn't true that Mr. Davy has been uh, visiting through Zoom with uh, Ohio guys, and you know, virtually with his son for quite a bit right now? Is that true? It's been a, a few weeks. Not well, okay. the last two, three weeks they have not enough. Okay. And uh, is it true that Mr. Davis has indicated at some point that the child is not willing to return to mom's home? No, he never told me that. I understand that the child even said, but what about Mr. Davis? No, he's never, he never told me that he didn't want him to go home. Okay. Do you yeah. think that Mr. Davis, did Mr. Davis share with you that if the child is returned home, mom will allow him to talk with his child? He's a pedophile. Uh, Why he would didn't, I? Uh, he didn't specifically say that, but I have talked with him about it, that, um, you know, that once he does go home, that before he, you know, goes home to talk with Desmond, and see, you know, like getting his phone number or see if Desmond is willing to call him on a consistent basis, like weekly. And he said he would do that. However, when I talked with Desmond uh, two weeks ago, he said that he hasn't talked to him, but he wouldn't give me the reason why. Okay. And which is the reason Mr. Davis gave to the agency that he was not involved in the children's life for several years, you know, more than 10 years? Did he say something? Um, so basically when I, you know, when I first started talking with him, he said he went to California to look for a job. Um, that didn't work out. So he came back probably three weeks to a month later. And then he, that's when he said that when he came back, uh, the mother was acting indifferently towards him. And so he was having a hard time engaging with the kids. And um, so eventually he told me that he left the home. And he said he just didn't know where they were at. He said he knew they went to PA at some point, and then he thought that they had never went. Um, and he just said that he tried to find out where they were at, but he was not successful. No one's mentioning the abuse, successful. the sexual abuse. Hey, Becky Sawyer's Sawyer. not mentioning it, and she knows about it. Elba Head and Shire didn't mention it. any no questions? One. I have no questions of this witness, Your Honor. Now, as you can see, you heard uh, Elba Head and Shimer's arguments, and she is not looking out for the best interests of the children. I have fully shown the proof, and like I said, I feel that she is holding a vendetta against me because I did file a grievance against her. Now, people like Elba Head and Shimer, you're going to be held accountable. I mean, the court might not hold you accountable because there are a lot of corrupt people in the court, and this is just a game where they put people in bondage, they hold our children, and, and, and they're not looking out for the best interests. If you're looking out for the best interests of the children, why are you allowing them in situations where they're being neglected or abused? My daughter was being neglected. My son was being neglected and abused. I posted videos up on my page showing evidence of this. If Elba Hedensheimer was doing her job properly, she would have known about all these abuses and neglect allegations, and she would have investigated, and she would have presented this to the court and would have made the correct decision and used discretion, not being biased, and uh, using a biased uh, perspective to make her orders and her, her um, arguments when she was in court. So I am exposing today because 
too many people are behaving like Elba Hedensheimer. You have attorneys and prosecutors, guardian ad litems, and even magistrates and judges who fail to speak up, who fail to do what's right. And it's all a, a situation where they just want to hold the parents' children and continue to keep getting them, using them as collateral to get money off of them. And it's mostly happening to African-American children, to black children in this country. They're all oppressing our children. Now, you get people who are uh, immigrate over here, foreigners, as in, uh, in Elba's case, and you come over here off the backs of the black race who had to fight for these rights and every foreign person can now partake of it, but then you want to put our people in captivity and bondage. And this is what God is having a problem with. And this is why he wants me to expose these people because he is ready to start judging. He's going to start holding you accountable because when you have a title as a guardian ad litem, that's what you're supposed to do. When you're supposed to be looking out for the best interest of a child, a child and you're supposed to be representing his children and you're failing to do what's right and you're letting neglect and abuse happen and you're uh, purposely fighting against them to be in the right situation because you want to keep them in the, in, the, in, the pawn, it's a pawn in the court so they can continue to make their money off of them, God is not going to deal with you. He's ready to bring down the courts and the judicial systems. He's ready to bring down all of the corrupt justice system that is involved in oppressing his people. Thank you.